Alrighty folks, this is Lurch from Airline Gaming and welcome to episode 5 of the Back to Basics series. In this episode, we're going to be covering cram cannons and making a simple one-axis turret. First of all though, I need to remove these uh, fuel storage boxes because I've decided that I want to put my cannon here. So before we actually delete them, rather than going into the menu and grabbing a new block, I'm going to press the R key to select this block. Very, very handy little tip and then just use the left mouse button to delete them. Now, I have to find another home for these, but rather than putting them all in one place, I'm going to put one of them here. And one of them... Hmm, not there. We'll put one of them back here. And maybe put another one at the front. Now you'll notice that I've been able to move back and forward really quickly here. If you double tap a direction, that allows your little cursor thingy to move twice as fast. Very, very useful for getting around the ship, and you'll find it will save yourself a lot of headaches. But now we have a nice clear spot in the middle here, and it's close to this indicator. This indicator is also really important because this denotes your center of mass. Now, this is the reason that we're not going to be building any propulsion for a little while, and I prefer to add that last. I'm going to take a metal block. In fact, no, we'll get lead. Lead is a great ballast block and is used to uh, build keels and other things to make your uh, ship, uh, change the balance of your ship. It's not really that good at armor, but if we click this, You'll notice that the center of mass just dropped a block there. Let's see if we can get it to go down another one. I'm just using the re shift replace, and you'll see it dropped another block there. And that's because the weight of the ship has lowered. Now, underneath here we're going to be building a cram cannon, or right, in this space. But a good thing before you build turrets is to armor the hull underneath them, and put them on a metal beam. This saves you accidentally breaking the whole thing later. It can be really annoying. So, you can find turrets in the new object block of the E menu. You have to go into the two axis turret, this is a sub menu, and in here we want the one axis turret. One axis turrets can spin left and right, and that's called their azimuth direction. Two axis turrets can spin left and right, but they can also turn up and down as well. We're not going to be using them just yet, we'll come to them later on because they have kind of niche purposes. For now, we're going to be using one axis. The reason we put this on a very strong block is everything that you put on this turret is vulnerable if this turret block gets destroyed. So we want the block underneath it not getting swept out from below because that'll destroy the whole turret. You can simply left click to place the turret block. You'll notice that the camera jumped up a bit. We're actually now on a different part of the hull. You'll see here that this is a blue block now and it's not bringing up the little delete option. This is because we're on a turret and it's actually a separate construction from the vehicle. Now, for the cram turrets, we have this lovely menu here, and we have all these great toys. I'm just going to make sure that everything unnecessary is turned off. Now, these are all some pretty interesting things. I'm actually going to turn on one of these options, because I want high explosive pellets, and this is what we're going to be using in this cram cannon. Before we get too far into the build, the first thing we're actually going to do is put a little metal ring using metal blocks around the turret. This helps protect the turret block. As I said, if this gets destroyed, the whole turret gets destroyed, so you want to look after this little boy. In this case, I've put a couple of metal blocks around it, and we've only made the turret a 3x3 three three space. That'll become important in the near future, and I'll show you why later. For now, we're going to grab a six-way connector. This is like the core of a cram cannon. It's the thing that you attach all of the other components to, and you have to attach a firing piece to this, and this is where you stick your barrels, and that's where the bullets come out. Right now, we're going to build a little core and a, a simple pillar out of six-way connectors. This is to allow us a little bit of space below deck to put some of our components, and hopefully stop them getting shot at. We'll see that the level of the hull we want is approximately here, because we raised the, the missile array, so, we want the firing piece to be maybe a little bit above this. So let's put the six-way connectors up to about here, and we'll grab the firing piece from the menu. Now that we have a firing piece, you'll see a whole bunch of stats come up about the turret, and all of those different menus and options and the things that happen. And we don't have to worry about that just yet. Now on a turret, if you switch between it, you'll actually lose your symmetry mode, so we have to turn our symmetry back on. So you press the N key for symmetry, and let us grab some barrels, and we'll put some barrels on. Now, barrels in cram cannons 
dictate the speed of the shell. We'll see here that the shell diameter is 200 millimeters and muscle velocity is 101 meters per second. That's in the third box from the top. Yes, I know it's a big menu. Let's add a couple more and see what the speed is at. It's now 112. That's pretty good. It's a little bit of an increase, but we've got this massive long barrel now. Might be a bit much, so we're going to trim it down a bit for now. We don't need all that barrel. There are loads of other barrel types. We're going to need some motor driven barrels because these allow the turret to aim up and down. If you look at the second box from the bottom, it's 5 azimuth and 5 elevation firing arc. If we use the motor driven barrels, these allow this arc to be slightly higher. You have to add a couple of them to see the effect. I'm using shift replace to change the barrel blocks into motor driven barrels. You see the azimuth and elevation are starting to rise. We want this to be about 45. Roughly a half and half split between motor driven and regular barrels is a good way to get a 45 degree azimuth and 45 degree elevation and gives the firing piece a nice big range of fire. Because we said that the hull is going to be about here, let's put a little armoured collar around this so we know how tall our turret can be. We have metal blocks, now we have symmetry, this is a bit easier. And we now have a nice little column around here and this should hopefully protect some of the damage coming in from the top against the components that I'm about to fit now. We're going to have to go back into the cram can menu and this here is the most important part of the entire thing. These are your auto loaders and these are what you connect your other components to like ammo boxes and the other explosive warheads, fragmentation pellets and hardener pellets. There's also EMP there hidden behind the veal but we'll explore that in a later time. Right now, we just want some manual autoloaders. There's also automatic ones if you want to try that out, but I prefer to use the manual ones because they give you a little bit more control. Now, remember the little green pins that we were talking about in a previous episode? These are really important here. You can only attach ammo boxes and warheads to the little bullet tips. It's kind of ironic. The little trumpets are used to connect to, other, to the six-way connectors, and that's really, really important. For this we want to orientate these so that the little bullet tips are on either side of the autoloader. That means that when we place these down along all of the six ways here, and I'm going to just rotate that with the tab key and use A and D to rotate it left and right. Let's build this section and let's build the last section. We now have a nice little array of autoloaders around the cannon. This isn't the most efficient way to do this. There's plenty of other options and you can do lots of cannon Tetris to make things a little more interesting and get a little bit more efficiency out of your cannon. For now, this is a very simple design and it's not too bad. So we're going to add some ammo boxes. The more ammo boxes you have, the more ammo you have in your cannon and the longer it can fire without having to worry about reloading. These cram cannons have a very, very long reload time and that's also dictated by these ammo boxes. The more ammo boxes you have connected to autoloaders, the faster your cannon is going to reload. Let's add 8 on the front here. We'll see that the reload time is 0.62 seconds. But we're, our shell diameter is only 200mm. Sounds like a really big shell, but for a cram cannon, that's really teeny tiny. So let's up that quite a bit. To do that, we want gauge increases. Gauge increases allow you to increase the gauge of your cannon. Let's add a bunch of these. There are a load of other gauge options in here, but all of these do exactly the same thing. You can use them to do pretty cosmetic designs on your cannons and, uh, you know, just make things look a little bit more interesting. And we'll have one more on the front here. We've now got a 1.6 meter cannon. That's pretty hefty. You'll see the reload time is shot up, but so is the damage. Now that we have most of the cannon complete, we still have these spaces at the back. And I've left these here intentionally. This is room for the high explosive pellets that I said I wanted to use earlier. The reason I use high explosive is they're excellent against the starting faction, the Deepwater Guard. And that's something you guys are going to want to exploit whenever you're playing for the first time. Seeing as we have loads of these big loaders here, or these warheads here, 
I'm going to actually switch out the top ones using the shift replace to an extra ammo barrel or ammo box. This is just to pull the reload time down a little bit. You'll see the reload time up there is 13.72. Let's replace these again with shells. And we'll see that the reload time is now 14.35. So it's not much of an improvement. 13.72. Knocks a half a second off the reload time. Not great, but not bad either. So that is our cram cannon, and that's more or less enough to start causing death and mayhem to everything nearby. Let's go ra get Rambot, and shoot this thing for the very first time. It should already be loaded. These things have a hell of a kick, and they're going to show off quite a lot of recoil now. Boom! We got up to 4 meters a second, just by pointing and shooting that cannon. But that was a big ass shell. This is a 1.6 meter shell. It's nearly as big as a car. And it does a hell of a lot of damage. And that's how you build one. So we're going to wrap the episode up here. And in the next episode, I'm going to show you how to hook up the AI to these so that the AI can do the targeting for you and you don't have to do all the work. I do hope you enjoyed it. Any likes, subs, or comments are really, really awesome. I love hearing from you guys and I read every single comment. As always, take it handy and have a bloody good day.